start with an intro. Okay, um, just wanted to wait for David Hall to attend, but, um, and um, I would love it if Miklos did most of the talking because it's his work, but I'm here to present. Uh, so, the, the need for a new API came from several, uh, uh, several uh, things. Uh, Miklos actually wrote in his patch that the need came from, uh, here's David, uh, from a uh, uh, new mount info. David actually remembers something different, but doesn't matter. We, we have several use cases, uh, including some use cases that were discussed on other sessions, like the session on config FD by James. Um, I don't remember. There were other sessions. There are s multiple use cases where we needed an API. Uh, we needed to extend an API, like also uh, Steve French referred to extending statics. And multiple users needed multiple different things. And it seems like a good idea to start uh, architecturing uh, more common API that meets those needs. Uh, Greg also has very strong opinions about how this uh, API should look and, or maybe more how it should not look, uh, not binary in particular. Uh, Linus also had some strong opinions. I don't remember actually which, uh, but this proposal here, uh, I'll let Miklos, uh, Miklos speak for, for himself, but uh, the status right now is there is a patch set, like a POC, uh, which Miklos is, I suppose, happy with. I'm happy, happy with for my needs, and Dave Chinner, uh, who proposed this uh, last suggestion, is also happy with. And Greg uh, is not unhappy with. So I think that's a good starting point. Miklos, do you want to take this from here? Um, so uh, this this went through uh, some iterations, and uh, this latest one. So basically, it's about getting some attributes and uh, or statistics from uh, from some kernel objects like uh, mounts or inodes, uh, but it could be. Uh, other objects like processes or basically anything. And uh, uh, it seems there's not, a, not uh, that there are several interfaces for this. Um, there's not, uh, and, and each, each one has a different way of accessing um, these uh, attributes. And uh, it would be nice to have some unified interface for this. And so um, this latest proposal is uh, using the uh, X, Xatra API, uh, and uh, but it's using a different namespace from the regular uh, uh, Xatras. And uh, one, dif one uh, difference is that, uh, for example, um, list etc doesn't work on these attrib attributes uh, because th that would break some legacy things for one and and uh, list etc isn't uh, it's it, li it lists just all the attributes in one go but we'd really need something that uh, uh, that's a hierarchy that uh, um, has a hierarchy so this proposed interface uh, has all, all these properties. And one, one objection was uh, for, for this kind of interface that it, it would be uh, not eff efficient enough because uh, you'd have to uh, retrieve in, uh, individual attributes. Um, and, but I, I don't know 
it, I think this, this would have to be tested. And so um, this could be extended to retrieve um, more than one attribute at a time. If if there's an if if um, uh, if it wasn't uh, fast enough, so that's that, that's the proposal. Um, and, and it's not just for get, right? I mean, the the same the same structure can be used for set for specific mm -hmm. values. Right. Cool. So so it could be used for for setting attributes as well as getting them. Um, I think at, at this point, what we want to know, is there any objection? Can we go forward with this? I have just a couple of objections. Uh, firstly, well, well, potential objections. I don't know that they're, well, they're certainly surmountable. Uh, firstly, Getafatra does not necessarily have the right security checks on it. Really, for some of these things, we want either no security checks because they're just general VFS stuff about your environment, or we want a stat type security check. So, wait, wait can, I answer that? can I answer that? So, F stat. That? Because so stat get, FS. get uh, traditionally has different security checks per namespace, right? Trusted and security, so it could be the same. Uh, yeah, and there's also LSM checks on it, if I remember rightly. What? Yes. LSM, security, SE Linux type checks that are different to ones on StatFS. But I, can't, I don't remember whether you can alter them by label. It may apply to get a, all get etc. no matter what you're doing with them. But we can probably, we could look at the uh, the the namespace and do something different. I mean, that's what we've done namespace. so far with the namespaces that yeah. exist. That's what we've done. Uh, another objection is I would prefer it for things we want to get quickly to be a number rather than a string. Because if you've got a lot of, lot of things going strickump, 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 that's a lot slower than just here's a number, index it with a switch that we would need to uh, benchmark in some way. Another one is, uh, I have had messages from people saying they liked FS info, particularly as it was, in, the stuff came out of it in binary form. And they didn't get text out that they then had to pass. So it would have been preferences for it binary data rather than text data. You, on the other end, you have people wanting to use yeah. uh, bash scripts. Yeah. So. Your top yeah. example has a zero sitting in the middle of the string. That's yeah, going to confuse an awful lot of parsers. Yeah, it's, got, it's, it's got escape characters in them, which is going to be hard. Yeah, but isn't that the representation? Is there actually a zero sitting in that string, or is it just a yeah, slash and two, yeah, three that's, zeros? No, it's zeros. This is a proposal. Zeros can be handled in, uh, in shell scripts, but that's a proposal. I don't right, know. but so now you have an encoding thing on top of this that's doing. Um, and and my, my, my view of the issue for binary and uh, performance is, I think this is a generic yeah. interface it, 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 yeah. that could be <coughs> sim simply and flexible and if you have a specific use case that needs performance, yeah. you need to demonstrate that your use case yeah, we, and then we have, have another interface. Uh, we have a use case for system D reading the list of mounts. Yep. Right, I know and about that's that. bad, we do a B tree, right? We can do a strings and a B tree and then it's a, a O log N search instead of a, we don't have to do stracump, stracump, stracump. We can do a, a, a B tree search. No, no, this was getting a list of things out. Yeah, but think about it this way. Most of the people don't have thousands of mounts, right? So most of the people yeah. can read the list of mounts Indeed. In, in this interface, and you can introduce another interface for performance. So in that case, why do we need the first interface? This interface is generic. It's not only for you, it's your, your case, right? That's it's okay. it's a generic way to extend a way to get and set uh, properties. Right. 
so a couple of observations here, right? This appears to be something which is useful if you want to find out what is the mount point on a particular uh, yeah. file or a directory. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it yeah, is yeah. not okay, designed that, yes. for getting all of the mount points. Um, thousands of mount points are reality. Yep. Those exist on my production servers all the time. Um, and so, but this interface doesn't, I think, address that. Right? This interface is about what is the mount point for that file, right? And so I think the get f adder, this is the non-controversial part, the, this, right? This, Once this we example start getting into set f adder, right, uh, there's gonna be all the questions about what can you actually add uh, as things that you can set, what are the permissions on it, um, what are the introspection questions, and if we don't get the set part right, Louise will be up here talking about how this was an evil interface just as bad as IOCTL, <laughs> right? Because it can go there, right? And so I'm not particularly worried if it's only about get me the mount point, um, get me the mount info for a particular directory. It's the camel under the nose about this could be used for arbitrary set that scares me. Um, and until we see concrete examples of the set, um, I don't think it would be wise to give a blanket, you know, you know, well, carte you, blanche for you, do whatever the hell you want. You, you don't you have to allow everything that has a get to have a corresponding set. Yeah, Some it's similar to SysFS in that way. I, it's, it, it, it's put in this particular case for this API, I think it's uh, really important that uh, the system D guys voice their uh, opinion and have a say on the thread because they have real issues with this. I know that Ian Kent has yeah, been it, on a thread with the uh, system D. There is a long standing bug. I, I, I don't have the link ready, sorry. Um, there's a long standing bug in system D where they have issues with mount notifications and getting mount properties and so on, and also serious performance uh, issues that they have with this because system D is indeed dealing in certain production workloads with thousands, ten thousands of, of mounts or, or more even. And that has been one of the motivating factors uh, for um, for the FS info style type. I'm not saying this can't be solved with, with this type of API, but it is something that I think we should try to address rather early on. The, the, that <laughs> particular use case, I suppose we could just give it a syscall for it, sys get, get mount list. I, I don't think we need to solve all the problems. I mean, this well, solve. It is a problem we need to solve. Yes, but it doesn't need to be solved by this. True. I'm, all, all the complaints here are just, and I think maybe it's not the right interface for listing the mounts, but nevertheless, so, uh, so it's useful for other things. Yeah. Okay, so let, let me just say that uh, I think the. Uh, uh, performance issues uh, that the uh, system D is having mainly come from uh, the current interface of uh, having to read the complete list of uh, mounts and their properties. Yeah, and, uh, and, and even if just, just a single change in that uh, list was done, it, it would have to uh, parse the complete file to be able to um, determine what, what uh, changed in that mount. Yeah. Oh, so basically... The notifica current notification tells you is something changed. Yeah. So you have to read the entire, yeah. pa pause yeah. the entire yeah. file. Yes, so, so you'd, you'd have to uh, have some notification about what changed. And then I think uh, this interface would be enough because uh, you wouldn't have to uh, parse all, yeah. all the re, re parts all the mounts, just the ones, one which, which, which uh, did change. Uh, yes, you do. Well, you have to need, you need that capability because there's the possibility that your event buffer will overrun. And then you have to reread the whole lot. Yes, but, but you're saying I this, but... This info was just a simple, basically a three column list of all the, all the mounts on the system, the parent and the, the last time it was changed. And that gave a huge speed up. I don't remember the, the numbers that Ian got out of it. But that could be a separate syscall. It doesn't have to go through get F, get F out of it. So I think, uh, so I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a different, uh, it's a different problem, having a, a proper notification uh, for, for which 
mount is changed. And yes, that, that is also important. I just wanted to mention that uh, if it wasn't clear, the example shows uh, information from a static hierarchy, but the idea is to be able uh, to extend this flexibly and uh, like every file system can have its own namespace. And if SIFS have SIFS has virtual get exutter. SIFS has SIFS dot something or is it user SIFS dot something to export to get and set information on the server. And that is great and it could be standardized. Every file system could have its own little things and LS Atter Chatter could also fit in this uh, model. So I was just thinking, I mean, forgetting the namespace question for a second, but going down to the middle, the mount info, how would I do this today? And my first thought is, okay, I'd look at proc mounts. Well, proc mounts doesn't. Mount info, proc, uh, mount, yeah, proc the, PID yeah, mount yeah, info. Yeah, proc whatever mount info. So, so it's interesting because you can see the list of mounts, you can figure it out. It's a little bit of code, but not a lot. And what you'll see though is not that. What you'll see is what, res so like, for example, let's say you mounted, uh, you'll see the mount options as they resolved, but things like R size, sometimes read size, there are certain things that are negotiated at mount time that will show up there. So you'll see the effective mount, not what you specified on mount, well, that's, which is maybe what you want, right? Yeah. So today, if I wanted that info, I could look at you know the, the mount, and I can see the mount options as they... Effective mount The effective options. mount options, yes. right. Which is a combination of the file system uh, properties and the mount properties. Right. And my, I envision this as you will be able to do something like this, uh, get info uh, dash fs or dash mnt and get the components of the mount options right. or even set the components of the mount options. That's how I, yeah. I envision it. But there's a second part of this that I think kind of matters, um, especially, you know, given all the people are outside this room right now, you know, over there. One is that to understand your mount, whether it's debugging or doing configuration or what changing things, you often have to get properties that are very file system specific that aren't specified on mount but matter for the mount. So we have a proc FS steps debug data that shows the device info reported by the remote system, the file system info reported by the remote system. And these, these you know, tag and values have no meaning to some file systems and to others they do. So you, know, you could have this, this set of keyword value, keyword value, keyword value. Um, yeah or flags, because there's a lot of information that matters to report, but we have no way of reporting it other than just in a proc thing. So we can sort of, like if there was a way to kind of go underneath the mount thing and show file system specific attributes that that may deal with the underlying block devices, they may deal with the remote system or whatever, those may be useful. And I was thinking about also from a term of namespaces, I don't, in some cases, some of these namespace related things, um, there may be no interface to set them this way or intuitively, but if you change them, you need to be notified. Well, how would I do that today? I'd have to do a VPF trace point and turn on trace, I don't know, remount or something. I mean, there'd be some eBPF trace point I'd have to turn on in user space to note that it changed. Because today that's, there's- That's the issue David was talking about, I think. Yeah. Like right now, the only thing I can think of is those PARMs would change, at least the middle of those, on remount, so I need to be notified on remount, but is there another case where we'd have to notify? I don't know. Well, I, I have a notification thing implemented. The reason I haven't put it upstream yet is that I need some way to deal with what happens when there's a buffer over on an, an event buffer. And that one of the things FSinfo was going to do was provide the way to query this could do it with this instead. Uh, one of the objection to this is path is not, path name is not sufficiently accurate or rather uh, it can be ambiguous. 
because you can have mounts stacked one above the other, hiding the mount below, but you still need to get to the mount be below. Now, you could, s I, I see at the bottom, yeah, they use that. Put use that as the mount. prefix of your uh, query. Oh, that's the separate mount namespace. Right, right. And this isn't a separate mount namespace. You need to be able to, what, one thing I did with FSinfo was rather than giving a path, give a mount number. So there would be, need to be some way to do that. Yes, the, uh, if you look at if you look at the, the patch, it has that. So you can you can uh, have you can look at uh, the mount info or the, or the yeah. In which based case, on based on the ID. In which case, the path name parameter is then superfluous, and if we can avoid evaluating yep. it at all, we should do. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt. I mean, the path sometimes point at something that is relevant, right? If you're querying something about the FS or the mount, so the specific path doesn't matter. But sometimes it matters, and as Miklos mm. uh, said in the patch, it can also, the path, point to a process object, and then you can query process properties. Yeah, I mean... Sure. Uh, just one. Miklos, could you write down a system call example uh, like how the system call would be called, for example, querying a mount in the, in the document, because I don't have it represented right now. Um, I, I'm not sure. He's not in, in the... So, so if we, the system call uh, that's proposed, uh, what yeah. arguments does it take? And this one? How is it called? Yeah, the... Oh, get exutter. It's, this is translated to... Oh, this is really just an extension on get the Xatter system call. I didn't have time to look at it, sorry. Yeah, get Xatter uh, dot. Uh, that's it. It's querying, the dot there is querying just the current directory. That's, that's what it is. And, So one thing that kind of jumps out at me on this is that the get at the some of these are structured in a way, right? So the get f adder mount info probably would look similar for ext4 and butterfs, and maybe the mount namespace thing too, would too. Th those are things that are already stand out in proc, right? Right. So one of the things that that I was kind of struggling with is there is value. If you have, you know, if you're debug, let's say you had a problem with your whatever company, right? And you had a customer, right? You may want to query some property of ext4 mount that is ext4 specific. Um, and, you know, the, the same kind of thing happens with SIFs or, SM, or NFS or whatever. You may want to query something that has nothing to do with any other file system. And so, you know, how do we tag something that is uh, not standard form? Let, let me try. <laughs> let me try. I, I guess I'm not, I, I think it's not particularly interesting to worry about the file system specific things because uh, applications who are going to be using that have to know about that particular file system. And that becomes a slightly different problem, right? So for example, I already have a way for somebody to find out ext4 specific mount information um, for a particular uh, block device. You know, you go through slash sys slash fs slash ext4 slash block device name, and then I have a whole bunch of stuff that you can query there. I could change it to use this new fancy X adder system, right? But it's extra code. I'm still going to have to preserve the old way of doing things because backwards compatibility. And for, EX, for programs who know about ext4, they can just simply do it that way. Right, forcing everybody to use this X adder system for file system dependent systems, I think is a bad idea. If a file system wants to do that because they don't want to, you know, figure out how to make it work using SysFS, sure. Right? Assuming but I don't think it's worthwhile for me to take my existing mechanism, which uses SysFS, and move it into this get adder for, for ext4 specific information, I just don't see the value add. Yeah, but the, this mechanism is available inside containers where SysFS might not be available yeah. inside a container. Yeah. 
I mean, that's, that's a good point. And by the way, I generally agree with this point, like in proc, I can get stuff in proc for debugging. And if I'm debugging a container, Proc know, might not be available either. Well, but what I'm getting at is that hopefully, if this is, you know, Azure or Amazon or Google Cloud or something, hopefully they have some support person who can get it at the SysFS or ProcFS. But let me give a counter example. Um, NFS, SMB, various file systems have stats. Well, the stats don't, there's no real easy way that I know of to go into proc or SysFS. I mean, we do, that's how we export it right now, proc, FS, SIF, stats. But it's kind of ugly because that means I'm querying stats for every mount because I don't have a, there's not a mount, you know, I, I can't go into a pseudo file directory with the mount and just get the stats for the mount that's slow. Um, so there's no, there's no X adder I can query on a per mount basis. I end up dumping the stats. When I say stats, you know, the, these are the underlying operations that are occurring. Um, but I don't think NFS can do, I mean, we have, there is an NFS stat program and there's an SMB stat program and all that, but I'm sure every file system has one, but how do you navigate stats? Because those can't work in SIS. Well, I, in, with FS info, I made a, one of the attribute types, get me the stats for that file system. And you suppose you could do the same thing in that because it gives you, just gives you a huge string, whatever the, the but, string that the file but is system. It, is it, but then the, I want you have for, to pause it. But, uh, I want it for that mount, not for the whole system. Yeah, well, that's what, what okay. I did. You, you just specified the mount, mount number. So, Steve, how, how th yeah. this should answer your question, right? If you want to get specific DOS SIFS uh, info, you can do it like that, right? You, you yeah. create your, your own namespace, and there should be a dynamic way to register your namespace. Mm -hmm. But also, referring to your talk about uh, extending statics, I think I understand what Ted says. There's no reason to change the way to extract x 4 specifics. But, but if SIFS wants to make offline bits generic, there is an interface to use, right? And this then will be the you wrong still place make for that. Hmm? what? The offline bit should be done through statics, not here. But I, I fully agree. For different reasons, it needs to be optim uh, optimal. But nevertheless, as a generic concept, we have CIFS uh, specific virtual uh, exeter. We want to make it generic. Let's use this. Of course, you need to maintain your old ones, SMB CIFS, but there's, this is a way forward. Uh, to make something generic that does not require, you know, allocating space in the statex uh, flags namespace. Yeah, and I, I agree on some of this, but let's take the example of stats. Would it make sense to have SIFS info stats in that dumps? There is, a, there is an objection to do that. There is an objection from Greg to dump uh, binary struct blobs in this interface. He says, we need this interface to be structural. The field exists or not exists will be able, will be easier for uh, you know uh, standardizing the interface. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, with respect to with respect to dumping stats, uh, here is Jan speaking. With respect to dump, dumping stats, I believe that NFS, for example, dumps stats per mount point and it's keyed on the BDI, like virtual device number, yeah? So under SysFS, under the BDI stats or some, or maybe, in, or maybe it's in debug FS, but I, I believe that NFS do provide the per mount statistics. It's and in it's, it's in proc, yeah, mount stats. Yeah, yeah, it's somewhere and you, you can actually grab I believe statistics only for a single file system. So, so it's like it's not that it's not doable with current like frameworks. Yeah? It's doable in either proc or in sysfs or in debugfs. You can do it per, per mount. It's it's not a problem. Or like uh, I in general, as I said, I think I I don't have massive objections to the interface. One one thing that I'd like to throw into the ring wouldn't it be worth to have a separate system call for this? Even if internally it uses the X adder um, callbacks, I find, it ex find it a bit weird f for user space to, they're not really extended attributes. It's just- No, a, no reason, no reason because 
uh, extended attributes already have a namespace. Nobody uses extended attributes without a user trusted security. But, but those may end up on disk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Supported on disk? Yes. But these aren't intended to end up on disk, so they're a different, completely different class of things. Is this yeah. really, it would be. There is an opportunity because the GetExciter family is missing GetExciter at. Right? So I wouldn't. Is missing what, sorry? GetExciter at. There is no GetExciter at. Ah, oh, okay. Right? So this, I agree, this is an opportunity that we can take to extend the family to add GetExciter at. And at the same time, maybe require at whatever this is called. Fine. Yes. I'm, I, I just wouldn't call it X adders. Yeah, it's, I think this it's gives fine. a very I mean, wrong impression. I think this is a reasonable. One other thing. I don't know if this is re really needed, but on the discussion, um, well, in, in Miklos's first touch set, get values, there was support for getting multiple values, like in a, using a vector. And Dave Chiner pointed out that XFS already had get multi exciter uh, ioctal from way back. So another opportunity is to extend the family to get exciter multi. I don't know, it needs to uh, be justified, it's but it's possible. Yeah. All right, thank you.